Hi, this is Rachel, and today we're going to cover topic 29 in our supervision curriculum, ethics. So when we talk about ethics, there has been a shift in our teaching and instruction, and I think it's a shift for the good. We are moving from maybe historically ethics being presented as here's what to do and here's what not to do, and more into ethics as a decision-making process. So ethics is not just do and do not. Um, an ethica, ethical dilemma suggests that there are things that would convince us to do either of those choices, depending upon which things we value um, as more important. In the uh, 2022 uh, ethics code for behavior analysts, it does identify some core principles of our ethics code and what we should view the rest of the ethics code by. Um, so we use those core principles and it outlines an ethical decision uh, making process that can be used. And by combining those pieces, then we are able to reach ethical decisions given a variety of circumstances, and we can apply the core principles of our ethics to our particular situations and make ethical decisions within those situations. So within the ethics code for behavior analysts, it outlines four core principles that should be the basis and the framework for interpreting the ethical codes. The first one is to benefit others. Behavior analysts work to maximize benefits and do no harm by protecting the welfare and rights of clients above all others, protecting the welfare and rights of individuals with whom they interact in a professional capacity, focusing on the short and long-term effects of their professional activities, actively identifying and addressing the potential negative impacts of their own physical and mental health on their professional activities, actively identifying potential and actual conflicts of interest and working to resolve them in a manner that avoids or minimizes harm, actively identifying and addressing factors that might lead to conflicts of interest, misuse of their position, or negative impacts on their professional activities and effectively and respectfully collaborating with others in the best interest of those with whom they work and always placing clients' interests first. The second core principle says to treat others with compassion, dignity, and respect. Behavior analysts behave towards others with compassion, dignity, and respect by treating others equitably regardless of factors such as age, disability, ethnicity, gender expression or identity, immigration status, marital or relationship status, national origin, race, religion, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, or any other basis prescribed by law, respecting others' privacy and confidentiality, respecting and actively promoting clients' self-determination to the best of their abilities, particularly when providing services to vulnerable populations, and acknowledging that personal choice in service delivery is important by providing clients and stakeholders with needed information to make informed choices about services. The third core principle is behave with integrity. Behavior analysts fulfill responsibilities to their scientific and professional communities, to society in general, and to the communities they serve by behaving in an honest and trustworthy manner, not misrepresenting themselves, misrepresenting their work or others' work, or engaging in fraud, following through on obligations, holding themselves accountable for their work and the work of their supervisees and trainees, and correcting errors in a timely manner being knowledgeable about and upholding BACB and other regulatory requirements, actively working to create professional environments that uphold the core principles and standards of the code, respectfully educating others about the ethics requirements of behavior analysts and the mechanisms for addressing professional misconduct.
The fourth core principle is ensure their competence. Behavior analysts ensure their competence by remaining within the profession's scope of practice, remaining current and increasing their knowledge at, of best practices and advances in ABA and participating in professional development activities remaining knowledgeable and current about interventions that may exist in their practice areas and pose a risk of harm to clients, being aware of working within and continually evaluating the boundaries of their competence, and working to continually increase their knowledge and skills related to cultural responsiveness and service delivery to diverse groups. So the four core principles allow us to interpret the items that are on the code. In addition to the core principles, we also want to use an ethical decision-making process to make decisions around situations, ethical dilemmas that we may encounter. One of the things that I like to point out is that ethical decision-making follows the same process as functional behavior assessment and a behavior intervention plan for overly adapted behavior. We start first by clearly defining the issue and the individuals involved. This is like our operational definition. We then want to go back and reference the code to identify which areas of the code um, the core principles or the code items themselves uh, may relate to this particular situation. We're then going to gather information and documentation to confirm if an ethical violation exists or if there, we are at risk of an ethical violation. We also have to reflect upon our own personal bias and learning history within the context of that situation. It's possible that we may be biased for or against a particular um, choice or option within the ethical dilemma because of our learning history, because of things we have encountered in the past, or because of maybe the people that are involved. We want to identify factors that may have led to this ethical violation. We're looking at the antecedents. How did we get to this particular situation? We do that so that we can both develop um, strategies for resolving the situation and prevent the likelihood that the situation will occur again in the future. We want to consult with trusted professionals and other resources to identify multiple ways that we could reduce the risk of harm and resolve the ethical violation. So this is where you want to have mentors and colleagues that you can reach out to and ask these questions and have ethical conversations um, to help make decisions. You also can look at the literature that's being published about um, ethical decision making and literature around maybe specific uh, examples of the situation you are looking into, especially if it's related to specific treatment practices. You want to then determine the best course of action and document your attempts to resolve the ethical dilemma. It's really important that you come up with a lot of solutions, a lot of possible options, um, determine the best course of action and document it because we also are going to evaluate the outcomes of these actions and continue to attempt to resolve the situation. That might mean we try some of those different strategies that we didn't select in the beginning. We're documenting or taking data on how those actions affected the ethical situation. Sometimes continuing to attempt to resolve might mean that we continue to engage with the individual directly involved and we just try numerous things. It might also mean that we do need to sort of elevate it up the ladder to supervisors or specific agencies or organizations or ultimately maybe the BACB. But if you do, they are going to look for that documentation on what was tried before it got brought to this level. Finally, we want to identify ways to reduce the likelihood of this ethical dilemma occurring again. When we were brainstorming about how did we get here, that can be super helpful to set up ways to prevent this situation from occurring again. We don't want to just 
resolve an ethical dilemma when it comes up, we want to prevent those ethical dilemmas from arising in the future. So that might mean that there's additional training or additional safety checks that can be put in place. That might mean that we need to um, revamp some of our teaching procedures or treatment plans or behavior intervention plans completely to avoid putting people in a situation where this particular ethical dilemma occurs in the future. So for the assignment, we would ask that someone bring an ethical dilemma to the group for the discussion, and we work through the problem solving process together. I think it's really helpful to practice that problem solving process together so that you can see that action and how you would do some of those things. Additionally, one that I have my trainees do is to work through an ethical dilemma on their own. And I give them um, an assigned case from the workbook of ethical case scenarios. And in that, they have scenarios and then they have um, four to five like questions that relate to the ethical decision making process. And you basically work through those steps together. And that is the um, Sush uh, book here, a workbook of ethical case scenarios in applied behavior analysis. And they now have a second edition that's out. So thank you. As always, if you enjoy this content and want to be notified when we put out more of the topics, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or feedback or want to um, have a conversation in the comments, please feel free to, and I'm happy to answer questions there. Thank you so much.